with roots dating back to board track and beach racing in the early 1900s, and decades of epic battles between the top motorcycle manufacturers. American flat track is America's original extreme sport. This year, the American manufacturing heavyweights, Harley Davidson and Indian Motorcycle, are once again going head to head on the racetrack. American flat track has crowned a champion every year since 1954. But now the sport enters a new era. It's time for the battle to begin. The stars of American Flat Track have rolled into Atlanta, Georgia for the Atlanta Short Track, presented by Indian Motorcycle Dixie Speedway in Woodstock, GA. Jason Wygant joined by Larry Pegram and Heather DeVoe will be patrolling the pits and podium all day long. And the stars of this sport are led right now by Jared Meese, who won our opening round in Daytona. Brandon Robinson, Jake Johnson, some of the favorites of the factory Harley-Davidson team, and Young Guns of the AFT singles class will be battling today under perfect weather conditions. And some exciting racing at our season opener a week ago in Daytona, which kicked off a new era for American Flat Track. We've got the rivalry. The Indian Wrecking Crew, the factory team, is back to challenge Harley-Davidson. Bad news for Indians' own Brad Baker, who was injured in his heat race and did not race. And then a spectacular fight in the AFT singles class coming out of the last turn. Dalton Gautier taking a dramatic victory. And then the AFT twins class, Jared Meese on the nine, got out front early and led every lap for an historic victory at Daytona. When we look at the Harley-Davidson point standings heading into this one, Jared Meese has the points lead because he won that one. Last year's champion and his arch nemesis, Brian Smith, finishes up in second. But that was a TT track last week, Larry. Totally different here in Atlanta. Yeah, back to our more traditional American flat track racing, the oval racing. This is a short track. It's in Atlanta, so it means we have red clay. Red clay likes to hold the moisture. That means good grip. The other thing this track is, it's high banked. These, these pitchers don't even do it justice. This track is very banked. What's that do? Makes these guys be able to carry more corner speed, have more grip. They also have to push the limits, run right up against that wall, and that can be more dangerous. And multiple grooves should lead to some great passing as well. And you'll see some as we give you our storylines. First with the AFT Twins class. These are our heat races. Out front early, Jared Meese. Working on a perfect season. Yeah, Jared Meese is just riding the wave right now. And uh, Briar Bauman here and Jared Vandekoy, who did a great job down there in Daytona. These two went at it in the second heat race. And there you get an example of how they can use the high and low lines on this track. Then heat three. Slamming Sammy Halbert out front on the 69 takes the win over Brian Smith on the one. So that sets up some of the favorites heading into the semifinal races, which will come up later on. Here's how you have your path to the main. Even if you win the heat races, you still have to go through the semis to make the main event. You got to run the gauntlet and you hope you can avoid the bad luck. Let's talk to Heather DeBow. Thanks, Jason. Tonight we are at the new venue at Dixie Speedway here in Atlanta, which is one of two short tracks we will be racing on this season. When I spoke to riders earlier today, they told me that there are some unknowns about this track, but the biggest challenges they believe they will face will be chasing the racetrack and passing. But keep your eye on the number nine of Jared Meese in the Twins class. Not only does he have momentum on his side after getting the win in Daytona, he also tested here on the Indian last year, which may give him a slight edge over the rest of the field. And if all goes well for him tonight and he ends up with that checkered flag, he will complete the flat track Grand Slam, giving him a win on a short track TT half mile and mile. Jason? Thanks, Heather. Let's see how Mies does here in semi one. He won that heat race that you just saw. That gives him the inside pole position here. And we're going to go racing in the semi, but he's got a lot of competition in this one. Yeah, he does. He's got his teammate, Brian Smith, and these guys have had rivalries for years. Let's see who's going to get the whole shot. Let's go racing here. Semi one from Atlanta. And not a great jump for Mies on the inside. Smith is going to try to take the lead on the high line. Uh, these two go at it right away. Some, uh, Meese right away pushing Smith wide. He's like, anybody can beat me here, but it's not going to be you, Brian. Oh, uh, but these two are arch rivals, so it's going to be an interesting battle. Plus, you got Briar Bauman there on the 14 in third, trying to break up this Indian wrecking crew party up front. Uh, the Indians are looking strong again. This is the first time we've been able to see these new Indians on the ovals, and they're looking strong. What can Smith do? Can he try to set Mies up for a pass? Also got the 67 getting in the fight. Davis Fisher in fourth. And lots of battling back there. You mentioned Jake how many Johnson, grooves. too, yeah. on the Harley trying to come up. And an important thing to note here, 
Davis Fisher was on the factory Harley last year. He was riding the Harley that these guys are on. They didn't hire him back. He's got a lot to prove. He's on a Kawasaki. He wants to beat these Harley guys. All right, so it should be interesting to watch him and the five of Jake Johnson, who is on the factory Harley this year, as Mies continues to lead Smith. But here you can see what the short tracks are all about. Yeah, these are very physical. These riders get no break. The straightaway is so short that they're not having a time to relax. They're not taking a breath. And uh, Jake Johnson, he's struggling on that Harley. This would be a track where I would normally see Jake Johnson right up front. Uh, he's having a hard time here. And like I said, Davis Fisher ahead of him. I, I know Davis isn't going to move over for him. And the 55, Jake Shoemaker, Steel Shoemaker right now, trying to get around Johnson. So that's a good battle there for top five. Me starting to open it up just a little bit. You know, yeah. Brian Smith's not going to like that. Yeah, Brian Smith is. And, and, the thing about it is, if Jared gets on a roll like this early in the season, Brian has to do everything he can to stop him right now. He can't let Jared start winning all the time. So you're going to see Brian do everything he can, even in this heat race, to try to run him down. Now, top nine is the key position. That qualifies you into the main. Henry Wiles is battling there to try to get into eighth and give himself a little insurance as Mies on the nine continues to pull away. Yeah, Johnson up to fifth now. He's solidly in the main event. And a little pressure there from the 55 of Shoemaker. Mies continues to open. Actually, no, I think Smith is I trying think to get he's a hook to catch him. on him. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, this is a mental game. These are the two top, top dogs right now. They're on the same bike, which they've never been before. But Brian knows I can't let Jared start winning every race. And there is no love lost between Mies and Smith. They've gone at it for the championship. Yeah, Some they, controversy through both, the years, They too. both live within about 15 minutes of each other in Michigan. They have a lot of the same friends and literally been ready to kill each other in the past. <laughs> so it's pretty neat rivalry. I think at the end of the day, they probably really love each other, but they hate each other at the same time. So they are the two leading it right now. Mies and Smith, Bauman solid in third. And then Corey Texter in the ninth spot. That would be the last one into the main. Mikey Rush is trying to get him on the last lap to get into the show. Oh, look at that. The 14 starting to close up. Bauman pressuring Smith right to the end. Checkered flag is out. Jared Mees continues to ride that wave, taking another win. And look at this furious battle for the final transfer spots. Mikey Rush, did he get Texter or not down to the line? Texter, no, he didn't. Texter beat him by, it looks like, one one thousandth of a second. Unbelievable. And there it is. Yes, Texter did hold off Rush, who is so strong in uh, Daytona just a week ago. It shows you how much parity there is in this series. All right, Heather DeBeau has our race winner, Jared Meese. Jared Meese, your winner here in semi one for the Twins class. Jared, Ryan Smith, your teammate, was right on your heels during the beginning of that race. How were you able to pull away from him? I don't really know. I just kept running my own line. and. Uh, the more and more laps I get on it, the better and better I get to feel it. And, you know, I feel like I get faster as the race goes on. So uh, I'm pretty excited. Just got to get a good start and kind of run my own race. I'm running, I, th I feel like I'm using a lot of the racetrack, but uh, maybe it doesn't seem that like that. But anyway, hats off to the uh, Indian Motorcycle, Rogers Racing, SDI team. They're working their butts off. Uh, Bubba, uh, Kenny Tolbert, Jimmy Wood. I just can't, uh, can't say thank you enough for uh, a wonderful team. One semi is down. The next one should be good as well. You got slamming Sammy Halbert and also the king of cool, Kenny Coolbeth Jr. Next on NBCSN. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Harley Davidson, the official motorcycle of AFT Twins. And by American Flat Track, America's original extreme sport. Back to the Atlanta Short Track, presented by Indian Motorcycle. Jason Wygant, Larry Pegram, Heather DeBow. Keeping you on top of the action here. We are ready for semi-race number two. Kenny Coolbet there on the outside on the factory Harley number two. But you want to watch toward the inside, the 69 of slamming Sammy Halbert, one of the most aggressive riders in this game. Could be a favorite here. And the riders are ready for the start. Let's go racing here in American Flat Track. Oh, Brad Baker with a terrible start. The factory Indian rider is passed by the second row going in the first corner. And Jared Vanderkoy, the Ohio kid that did so well in, down in Daytona, out in the lead in this semi. 
And the 69 of Halbert from the inside got squeezed off. He is back in third. Oh, some bump in there. Danny Essek just nailed number 29. That is uh, Jake Mattia. Yeah, he Lucky to stay on two wheels. Yeah, Danny Essek, Daytona 200 winning uh, superbike rider and doing well. He's up to third in this race, so he's, he's doing really well. Vanderkoy still leads on the 20, but he's got his hands full. Here comes slamming Sammy Halbert who is not afraid to make contact if he needs to, to take the lead. And he almost made it happen. Yeah, this is a t the type of track that Sammy Halbert would do really well. And here he comes around the Ooh. outside, right up against the wall. That was close. You know, Sammy's riding the old XR750. This bike has been developed for almost 40 years. It dominated dirt track for so many years, and it's still working now. You know, the guys are out there on the new Harleys, and they're doing really well, but that bike still needs some development, and Sammy Halbert's able to run up front on the old Harley. And look at that battle for third. Brad Baker on the sixth trying to make up for the bad start. We'll go show you the replay here of how Halbert took the lead from Vanderkoy. Yeah, he goes to the outside. Vanderkoy bobbles, pushes him right up to the wall, and that's that's what's called threading the needle right there. And Halbert makes the pass stick. And you also remember he got Eslick and Baker back there, so he knew he had to go. Those guys are going to start putting the heat on. Let's see if Halbert can get away. Sammy Halbert on this kind of track, he gets a lead. He's going to be tough. It's all about momentum. You don't want to slow down too much in the middle of the corner. You're trying to carry as much corner speed as you can, not slow down. Sammy Halbert is an expert at that. Halbert running the number 69 in honor of his brother, who lost his life in a crash racing a few years ago, and certainly a very proud rider, and he's not afraid to take the fight to all these factory bikes that are out here this year with the Indians and the Harley Davidsons leading them around right now. Baker on that factory Indian up to third. Remember, Baker crashed out of last week's race, so he desperately needs a good one tonight. Yeah, and look at his rear brake. It's glowing. This is a signature move from Brad Baker. He rides the brake all the way around the track to keep the wheel spin down. Look at that brake. His brake Ooh. is glowing. His rear brake rotor is literally glowing red. That's how hot it is. Jake Mattia in fourth. He's getting the best look at that ignited rear brake rotor. Wow, that's pretty cool. Remember, top nine transfer to the main event. If you're 10th or worse, you watch from the grandstand. So it usually gets pretty crazy back in those positions, especially now as we're going to be close to one lap to go. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Jared Vanderkoy. He's really coming to maturity quickly as a rider. And also Danny Eslick, Daytona 200 winner. Brent, there's Brandon Robinson on the factory Harley. His brake rotor's glowing as well. Wow, I mean, have a little barbecue there in the pits. <laughs> These bikes glowing like charcoal. White flag now out. Sammy Halbert trying to bring it home. Vanderkoy keeping the pressure on. Good job by Baker to recover from the bad start in third. And remember that battle in the back. Dan Bromley is eighth. Chad Coase is ninth. They have the final two transfer spots. Can they hold on to them? Looks like Halbert's got it. Checkered flag is out. Slamming Sammy's got the win in semi number two. And here's your battle down on the wire. The 62, Bill Werner racing tuned. Bromley's going to get into the show. So good job by him to take eighth. Chad Coase is ninth. That'll set your main event. Brad Baker, well, at least he made it to the main event this time after a disastrous uh, Daytona where he didn't even make it out of the heat race. Let's send it down to Heather with our race winner. Here with semi two winner in the twins class, Sammy Halbert. Sammy, we saw you battling with the 20 side by side, and then you were able to get around him on the outside. Talk about that pass and the rest of your race. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jared was running good and uh, just tried going under him a couple times, but he was running a pretty tight line, so uh, got it up on the outside, got some momentum, and uh, got my way by. It feels good to get a win. Uh, my first uh, first first win on the Essenson Racing uh, bike, so it's uh, everything's going well. Now, it seems like once you guys got, get out in front, that's where you want to be. Do you expect to see the same in the main event? For sure, I want to get a better start in the main and stay out front. You know, the old Harley's working good. I got a great team behind me with uh, Estenson Logistics and uh, True Line, McCandless Truck Center, and Enerlon. A lot of good people helping me out. So great racing in AFT Twins so far. We expect the same from AFT Singles. Here is Dalton Gauthier, who won our last race at Daytona in dramatic fashion. What's up, guys? I'm Dalton Gauthier. I'm uh, number 22. I'm from Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. I'm 18 years old, and I race professional flat track. Yeah, just two wheels for life. Always on my Honda Grom, just ripping it up. I love spaghetti, Olive Garden. I love Olive Garden. That's probably the best restaurant ever. And uh, Jimmy John's, you always got to go Jimmy John's freaky fast. 
My favorite movies are Talladega Nights. I mean, Shake and Bake all the time. And uh, just, I, I don't know. I don't have that many favorite movies. I don't watch movies that much, so. My dance skills are pretty good on the dance floor, so. Just dabbing up all the time. And uh, even if I win a race, I'm just dabbing up, you know? So, yeah, if all the ladies just want to come to the dance floor with me, I'm down. Okay, and here's the dance partners on the track. 450 four strokes. They're based on motocross bikes, but they're still awfully fast. And one rider in this singles division, it's all about digging deep and putting on a great show for these fans. He doesn't let anything get in his way. My name's Jason Griffin. I'm from Easley, South Carolina. Rider number 230, Jones Brothers Kawasaki. 1976, my dad's first time on a ride in lawnmower. Just a, fr a freak accident, but probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Just ran up behind him, snuck out the back door, and he backed up, cost me an arm and part of my foot. He bought me a JR50 when I was three. And my brother, younger brother and I, we raced motocross and enduros. We lost my brother about 10 years ago, and that's really what set off my dirt track career. He was racing a bike that he and my dad built. He raced for about two years, and it's just, uh, I felt like his career was kind of, kind of cut short. It really brought my family together. I trained on a mountain bike when I started racing motorcycles. Got a uh, road bike and went on a group ride with uh, a guy, Jim Cunningham, that runs Greenville Cycling back home. There's 10 athletes. We have uh, wheelchair guys, upright trikes. There's different degrees of disability. Took a brief hiatus from the dirt track to train for, try and make a spot on the U.S. Paralympic team. We're gonna make the 2020 games, but you know, in the meantime, this is what I love. This is my passion. It's a lot to juggle between both sports. I'm a racer first. I'll always have that competitive nature. They're like, isn't it hard? I'm like, well, yeah, it's as hard as anybody, you know, as anyone else has it. I don't know any different. I can't let that enter my mind. I'm out there to race. I'm gonna beat that guy and that guy and that guy just like they wanna beat me. You cannot take the spirit of racing away from any of these riders. And we'll give you the storylines we've been following throughout the afternoon in the AFT singles class. First to 22, Dalton Gautier picking up where he started in Daytona. Takes a heat race win, but you saw a big crash back here at the end. Yeah, and here's the replay of it. Kyle Johnson just loses that chain reaction. Here comes Tristan Avery, just misses him. Luckily, everybody got up and walked away from this one. Yeah, that was a close one, so it was great to see them walking off under their own power. So Gautier has the victory in his heat race, but watch the 52, Shayna Texter. Yeah, that's right, the girl putting it to the guys in this one. She gets a great start and begins to pull away. You got Price there on the number 92, trying to keep pace, but Texter would go on to take the victory. So consider Shayna Texter a contender for the main event win tonight, along with Gautier. Should be interesting. Our final is coming up next. You're watching American Flat Track on NBC Sports. We're back, ready for our AFT singles class main event here at the Atlanta Short Track. Shayna Texter on the 52, the young woman who put it to everyone in the heat race. See how well she can do here in the main event. Here's her starting lineup, Larry. Yeah, I think Dalton Gaultier right now is the guy that to beat. Shayna Texter looks super strong in her heat race, but you're gonna have a lot of fast guys. You got Kobe Carlisle, Cameron Smith, uh, Kevin Stallings. All these guys are going fast tonight. Everybody's super close on lap times. You're gonna have a really close main event right here. Well, it was dramatic. He came down to the last turn of the last lap in our previous race. How's it gonna turn out here in Atlanta? Here is your AFT singles. Oh, Shayna has oh. got smoked off the line. That was a terrible start for her. She's almost in the back of the pack. And Gautier, meanwhile, a great start. So our heat race winners are basically at both ends of the field. And Gautier, well, it is go time, starting to take off. Yeah, Shane is in 10th place on the first lap, so she's got a long way to go to catch Dalton. 99, Kevin Stallings up to second. Going to try to run down Gautier. And you also have the 12, John Vanderland in third. Gautier is pulling away. What's Texter going to do way back there? Well, she's going to have a hard time. This track, like I said, everybody's so evenly matched on this track, other than it looks like Dalton Gautier. He's <laughs> pulling away, but these other riders are all almost, almost identical speed. She's going to have a hard time. Now watch Texter here on the 52 and the light. Oh, she just 
left late. That was, I thought maybe she spun the tire, but she just decided to let everybody have a head start. She was looking at the light while everyone else was taking off. So she's got a work cut out for her just to even get in the top 10. Ninth place right now as Gautier continues to roll out front. Yeah, she's, like I said, that everybody's really equal. I'd love to see her come back and win this thing, but right now Dalton Gautier's in a race by himself. Brandon Price, some clutch moves there, weaving his way through traffic to get the number 92 in green up to second around Stallings. So yeah. great racing, except for the lead. Yeah, Brandon Price doing a great job. He's a young guy, 17 years old. He's, uh, you know, trying to, all these guys are trying to prove themselves. And a lot, a lot of them, what you got to realize is they're trying to prove themselves in one corner sometimes, and they got to calm down and, <laughs> and, and, and do a good job all the time. But you can't tell a 17 year old kid to calm down. But uh, Price doing a great job right now. And Dalton continues to pull away. Dalton Gauthier looking to make it two for two to start this season. Another rider in the fight, the 44 of Cameron Smith. Texter now up to eight, and, and, and Dalton Gauthier here, he's just showing that he is the next guy maybe to move up to the AFT Twins class. He's the next guy to look out for. And uh, I'm sure Shayna is also one of those, but she her start has just ruined her night so far. Good battle here. You got the 12 of uh, Vanderland putting some heat on, trying to get up into second place around the 92 of Price. Dalton is just like on rails. He looks like he's having a good time. And when you look <laughs> like you're having a good time like that, you can just see he just he doesn't even look like he's working hard. He's just out on a Sunday ride and he is killing these guys. Do you normally see this size of a lead on a short track like this? No, you don't. And I tell you, like, if you were watching him ride, this is a good shot of it. He's so calm on the bike right now. And that's what you have to be on a track like this. He's literally not spinning the tire at all. The rest of these guys are trying a lot harder and they're going slower. Yeah, Price, Stallings, Vanderland there. Texter's up to six battle. now, so oh. she's moving up. She's doing a good job. But like I said, she's a little bit faster than this group. He's a lot faster. If she would have had his type of speed, she, he, she might have been able to get up there and run with him. She's on the red Honda there. You can see her lurking at the back of this train. Price, Stallings, Vanderland. Five to go, five to go. Can she get it up there even to a podium position as top three within range, even though she started about last? She really did. She She's going to be kicking herself tonight. She's a, she's a really great rider, and I don't know what happened there. There could have been a problem with her bike, too. We don't know, but she definitely left late, one, one reason or the other. Slowly starting to close in, though, is Texture. You see that small gap to fifth place as Gautier continues to stretch it out front. But these final three laps are going to be furious. These riders are putting themselves in position. Stallings in third. Vanderland on the number 12 right in the hunt. Yeah, and Shayna, you know, Shayna weighs 100 pounds on the miles and half miles. That's a big advantage. On this short track, she just got a little bit less strength, so it's a disadvantage. And a rider up high in that corner there. Right up into the wall. Oh, oh that's why we got that's our price. second place. Price is down. A oh, red flag, red flag. So the wheel and caution lights are out. Let's try to figure out what happened here to Price up top here on the green motorcycle. It looks like Price might have got tired and took a nap. Okay, so it, is. <laughs> it looked like that in slow motion. That's not what happened. He just lost it. He just lost both ends at the same time. Yeah, he's up. He's all right. But I'll tell you who got lucky there. Kevin Stallings, number 99. He was in third, barely missed Price, but almost got into that fence. He really should have been. He did a great job to keep it out of the fence. And now he's setting second. Yeah, we'll have the staggered restart, and no matter what, in AFT, if you have a late red flag, we'll do a five-lap shootout. So five laps to the finish, and the benefactor is Texter on that 52. This time she does get the jump, and it's a great opportunity. She's already up to third. Up to third. Can she catch Dalton now? And Price, who has crashed out. So now the second place rider is Stallings and Texter. That inside line didn't oh, Texter work. Just Smith got around the outside. On the yeah, outside. yeah I, I really thought she may give Dalton a run, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen at this point. She looks like she's going backwards a little bit. So Cameron Smith, third place. Texter's going to have to try to fight back to get a podium tonight. Dalton Gautier takes off again with the lead. So now the battle is between Stallings and Smith for second and third. Let's see if Texter can work her way back into it. She looks like she kind of regrouped there. I think she just got, got a little bit flustered one lap. She's starting to maybe reel these guys back in. Let's see if she can get on the podium. Smith working the high line to try to take second away. Almost opened the door for Texter. 
Gauthier's gone again. He's gone again. In three laps, he's pulled that much of a lead. He's in another class tonight. And uh, Texter right there, she's trying. Two riders taking up all the good real estate in the track. Now she's going to try oh, to go inside. Them. Oh, that was a, that's a forceful move. Moved him wide. White flag, and she's up to third. Oh, if she can hold it, Smith is going to try to run that high line and get her back. Shayna Texter for the moment is locked down third, looking for a podium. Remember, she started this race about last after the bad jump, but Smith is going to try to get her back one more time. And the 27 in the hunt, Jamison Minor trying to take it away. Checkered flag out. Dalton Gautier has won the first two rounds of 2017. And a battle right down there to the end. Shayna got third. Yeah. She got on the podium. Great finish from where she started. That restart definitely helped her out. That could be valuable points to the end of the season. Smith holds off Minor for fourth. Colby Carlisle, the flying tomato, ends up seventh. There are your full results. The 18 rider field. So Dalton Gauthier, they couldn't figure him out in Daytona or here in Atlanta. Here's Heather. Dalton Gauthier here with back-to-back -back wins. Dalton, you were leading again. Yeah, two in a row, just like you said, and you led again by a full straightaway. You are extremely fast. What is leading up to all this success that you're having? Uh, just my dad. He's had the bike working awesome today, all day, too. And, uh, yeah, uh, Daytona was a rough start, but uh, we came through and got the win. And uh, two in a row today, so it's pretty, pretty sweet. Congratulations, Dalton. Thank you. So Gote is, of course, the points leader after winning the first two rounds. Texter, that third, boosts her up to ninth in the standing. She struggled at the TT at Daytona. Why Anderson, solid second in the points right now. Let's go to Heather with Shayna. Here with third place finishers, Shayna Texter. Shayna, you got a bad start off the line in that first start there, but then you were able to make your way all the way up to third. Talk about your run tonight. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. You know, all night I've been getting able to get hole shots, and I uh, kind of had a little bit of a brain fart. The light this year is a little bit different than last year, and uh, so I was kicking myself in the butt the entire race and just picking them off, praying, you know, for a red. You know, unfortunately, it's at another rider's cost, but and, uh, I hope he's okay. And I uh, was super confident when the red came out that we, uh, you know, we had five to go. We were going to get up there. So Gauthier going to celebrate again a victory in AFT singles. And we transition to the big bikes, the AFT twins. When we come back, we'll get to know the Daytona winner and three-time series champ, Jared Meade. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle. Be legendary. And by E3 Spark Plugs, the official spark plug of American Flat Track. One week ago in Daytona, Jared Mees made his debut on the new factory Indian Scout 750, a good one. Let's get to know him. My dad always wanted to race flat track growing up as a kid. When I started riding around, you know, I think everybody kind of starts riding around out in like a circle, just, you know, point A to point B and back around A, you know. I think a friend of his says, man, you ought to let him come out to Pine Grove, PA. It's a little TT flat track race pretty close to home, check it out. Went there and I got second my first time out. Had fun with it, liked it. My mom and dad divorced when I was about six, seven years old. You know, I think it was a really good bond for my dad to, to really be enthused in motorcycles and also myself. But flat track was basically just the first race we did and we just went weekend after weekend and kind of climbed up the ranks and stuck with flat track. So that's kind of where I planted uh, all my efforts at and just moving up the scale. Now, tire choice, very critical on a track like this. So let's send it back down to Heather Debo, who has Jared Meese for this week's Dunlop Motorcycle Tire Tech Tip. Here with last week's winner of the Daytona TT and three-time Grand National Champion, Jared Meese. Jared, you guys get two compounds to choose from with these Dunlop tires. What goes into the decision of choosing between a hard or soft compound? Well, you know, uh, the biggest thing is you watch the racetrack throughout the day, and um, we're getting some sun and some wind, so the track's getting drier and harder, and the blue groove is starting to fast approach. So the track's going to start to get harder. You know, typically you want to try to get traction and, and, and grip, of course. That's pretty much the name of the game. Being a short track and being now well, we need grip, I'm going to probably say the softer compound is going to be pretty key. Well, that's old school flat track racing right there. Jared Meese just told everybody standing within earshot, I'm going to run the softer tire, guys. And then we look at this list, he's got the harder tire on. That's, uh, that's flat track racing at its best. So we'll see how that plays out as the race goes on and traction changes. That will be so key. We're going to go short track racing in our AFT Twins main event coming up next from Atlanta.
We are back. The superstars of American Flat Track are here from a big crowd in Atlanta for our first oval track race of the season. And here is the grid. Starting lineup for the main event, Jared Mees winning his semi and his heat race. Sammy Halbert has been very fast. And don't count out last year's champ, Brian Smith. Yeah, qualifying 10th there, Danny Eslick, the Daytona 200 winner for this year. Yeah, road racer. Super versatile to do it here on flat track as well. Here we go. It's going to be 25 laps. Watch out for Halbert. Very aggressive on the 69. And the pole position goes to the Knight of Mies. Let's go racing in Atlanta. And a great jump from Mies on the inside. Halbert's going to try to run around the outside. Mies and Halbert already rubbing elbows. I can tell you this is going to be an exciting main event. <laughs> Vanderkoy in the 20, battling out with Baker on the six, and one is Smith, three wide through the center of this corner. As they try to set up your leaders right now, Mies has it, Halbert all over him. Yeah, Halbert in the middle of a wrecking crew sandwich right now. The Indian guys, one, three, and four. Halbert on the Harley in second. We finally got that Harley Indian battle we wanted. Maybe not the right Harley yet, but they're getting it on. Well, whatever Harley, Halbert oh, they is they touch on, again. Working. They touch again, this is gonna get interesting. Wow, it's already twice they passed each other with a little contact, and Mies is not waiting. He's trying to come right back, and they call Halbert there he goes, slamming up the Sammy. Inside. Oh. Now he's going to have a hard time getting that turn. Sammy's going to come right back under him. Awfully aggressive here for the third lap of 25, going back and forth. Mies does not want to sit in second place. I think Mies is just afraid if he lets Sammy get away, he might not be able to run him down. I need to screw him up a little bit right now, he's saying, and get under him and, 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 and just mess with his mind a little bit. And Brad Baker, who did not race last week at Daytona after a big crash in his heat race, climbing up to third. So a little vengeance on the mind for him as Halbert leads Mies around. Yeah, it looks like these two may be the class of the field tonight. They look very evenly matched. I, I'm really excited to see because these two guys are fireworks by themselves, let alone put the two of these guys together. Yeah, I was going to say earlier, they call him slamming Sammy for a reason. He is not afraid to run it in on you and make some contact. Yeah, and you got jamming Jared Meese and slamming Sammy Halbert <laughs> right here. So we're, I, I, if we don't see fireworks in this race, I'm going to be surprised. And probably the rider hoping for that might be Baker in third or Smith in fourth. If these two tangle up, they could be the benefactors. And the guy also making a nice showing again, Jared Vanderkoy from Ohio. This, this is my hometown boy. I got to give him a shout out. He's, he's solidifying himself as a front runner in this series and really what is almost his rookie year. Oh, Mies has got a line he's in the inside. Run. Oh, I thought for sure he'd run it in there. All right, so they've cooled off just a little bit in this battle for the lead with uh, eight laps of 25 complete. A long way to go. They are really pulling away from everyone else. Now, Halbert. Makes a mistake, goes up wide. What Jared's doing is he's just trying a little bit different line everywhere. And what he can do with Sammy in front of him is he can judge, hey, I caught him here, I didn't catch him here. That's gonna help him if he can get in front of Sammy. He's gonna know the fastest line. And back to this battle between the Indian Wrecking Crew teammates, Brad Baker and Brian Smith, third and fourth, fighting each other while trying to keep the leaders in sight. These guys, our two guys are going to be a lot more friendly with each other. They know they're not battling for the lead. They want to catch these guys in front. They're not going to bump on each other, cut each other off. If one of them's faster, they might even let the other guy go just to try to get up to these two in the front. And these two continue to duke it out. The leaders and our third and fourth place battle. And there's Vanderkoy getting a good look at it in fifth. This is what Brad Baker needed after scoring zero points last week. Yeah, Brad needs to get a good finish in first, then, then try to win some races. Baker is a rider that has been beset by injuries the last couple of years. He's trying to hold on for a podium while Halbert tries to hold on to the lead. Great racing here in Atlanta. Can Slam and Sammy beat the Indians tonight? Welcome back to the Atlanta Short Track American Flat Track. Great racing underway from a big crowd on a Saturday night. Let's get to know Jake Johnson from the Factory Harley team. Started racing motorcycles when I was, man, four or five years old. My dad uh, raced flat track uh, when he was a kid. As soon as uh, he had his son and, you know, had somebody to take it over, that was it. You know, that's all I knew. So it's been 
you know, pretty natural for me throughout most of my career. The older you get, the tougher it gets. You kind of can't rely on that talent anymore and have to have to work a little bit harder, but I've been doing it since I was a kid and uh, I've always loved it. Just just love motorcycling in general, so, you know, there are the, the risks and rewards and, and you kind of have to weigh them things out as you go, but can't think of anything else I'd be wanting to do. And we'll show you where the Harley Davidson riders are right now. Johnson in ninth, Robinson 11th, and Kenny Coolbeth, we're on board with him right now live, running in 16th. Back to our leaders. That's another Harley underneath the 69. Sammy Halbert leading, but here comes the Indian motorcycle number nine. Jared Meese trying to get him. Jared's been able to reel him back in. Sammy had pulled out a little bit of a lead. Jared's reeled him back in, and I can guarantee you, Jared's just trying to get close enough to run it under him one time and just try to mess him up a little bit. Okay, now we're going to be uh, seven laps to go as the aggression start to ratchet back up at a certain point. Well, <laughs> the clock is ticking, so to speak. Jared knows I've got to get up there and rattle him a little bit. If, he, if I just let him keep rolling the corners like this, I'm never going to get by him. Baker on the number six is third. Brian Smith is fourth. And Vanderkoy trying to hold on to fifth. The young rider in the top five, but for how long? He is under some fire. As we go back to the leaders, Halbert's got to know that Mies is on him now. Yeah, they're starting to catch some lapped riders, and blue flags are out. AFT guy's doing a great job. Oh, and there it is. The pass is made. So Vanderkoy pushed back to sixth. Briar Bauman from the Zanotti Racing Machine up into fifth. So Bauman was just stalking him back there as we go to the lead again. Every lap, it looks like Mies is a little bit closer. Yeah, and Sammy checked over his shoulder that lap. Where is this guy at? I'm catching these lap riders. I need to know how to negotiate him. Is Jared gave me a little breathing room? No, Jared, and here he comes. He's going to come this lap. Here he goes. Down to the inside. Oh, oh and they him. come together. Oh, that was Woo. a And Sammy, all oh, right back at him. Sammy, I knew, was going to repay the favor. That was a little bit dirty. And now here comes Mies again, he taking him way high. Yeah, this is getting personal in a hurry. Somebody better calm down basically yeah they're aiming right for each other's and legs he's in coming these corners. in again slamming sammy's doing exactly what he's known for me's coming back oh and oh. they come together halbert's oh. down oh in the straightaway too hopefully nobody gets into him he jumps the wall he gets out of the way this is definitely going to bring out a red flag that bike in the middle of the track and is he hurt or is he just mad oh he's mad <laughs> these two guys i told you that was that was a that was the two kids on the block that were shoving each other, and they just came to, to blows. Wow, yeah. The contact was getting more and more aggressive. Take us through it, Larry. Uh, I mean, every time they were just running it under each other right here, it looks like, oh, that's a, I, don't, I don't know if Jared, Jared might have took him out right there. I, it, it was hard. This is a better angle. Let's see what happens. Oh, you know what? That, ooh, that was Sammy. I, as much as it was, if you look, Jared didn't alter his line. Sammy looked over. And when he looked over, he moved left. And now they've got to work on the motorcycle to try to get him back on the grid for the restart. Let's toss it to Heather. Man, Sammy Halbert, you went down hard there on the front stretch. First of all, are you okay? And then talk about what happened between you and the nine. Yeah, luckily I'm okay. You know, my, my gear did the job and uh, just slid out down the front stretch. Pretty easy slide out, just just at speed going down the front straightaway. So it's not too often that uh, not too often that your handlebar gets clipped going down the front straightaway and you lose it. But uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. I had a good run going, thought I had a shot at the win. You know, obviously I had a shot at it and uh, lappers kind of made me go tr try a different line uh, to get by him. I think Jared closed up then and just he just sent it and just went for it. And uh, unfortunately, I ended up on the short end of the stick. Now your team's working on the bike right now. Do you think you're going to be able to get back out there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll ride it however they get it. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll try and change those handlebars and see if they get them straight. But uh, if not, whatever, I'll just I'll just ride it as is. <laughs> well, the good news is he's going to get back in the race. The bad is that he's in the back now. And look at this. The three factory Indians are now one, two, three with our five lap shootout. Our restart to the checkered flag. Yeah, this could be a, the perfect evening for Indian, you know, to come into their second event. If they can get all three riders, uh, you know, and, and have the whole podium, this is going to be a big, big deal for Indian. The 14, Briar Bauman, he's the one to try to stop them. He is on the inside of the number one of Smith, but Smith's going to beat him off the corner. Bauman keeps working that inside line. Yeah, it really looks like that outside line is the way to go. Uh, there's been a lot of guys trying to run it up the inside, but they just lose on the X into the corners. 
And Baker starting to lose Mies, who will be shooting for his second straight victory to start this season. Bauman is not giving up on this fight for third, though. Yeah, the big story here is Jared Meese. He wins this race. He has the Grand Slam. He's won all four kinds of flat track racing. So this is a very important night for Jared Meese, a very important night for Indian. If they can get one, two, three, what a statement in their second race ever. And some battles further back as Halbert is trying to make up ground. Bent handlebars or not, he is coming through the pack like a wild man. I think he wants to try to get in two more laps, get all the way up <laughs> and give Jared Meese a little medicine. He is up to 10th place already from dead last. He's actually caught Vanderkoy, who you remember was in fifth for a lot of this race. So that's how quickly Halbert's making up ground. White flag is out. Meese is looking to make it two for two. Baker, what a recovery from an injury and not racing our previous event, looking for the runner-up ride. And can Smith hang on to make it an Indian podium sweep? Checkered flag's gonna be in sight. Be it a TT, a short track, or anything else, Jared Meese is on top in American flat track. Sammy Halbert all the way back to sixth from dead last with five laps. Unbelievable, that shows you how much speed he had. And he's probably not gonna be too happy about letting this one slip. And it goes into the hands of Jared Meese who's gonna take the checkered flag and celebrate something he's certainly used to doing here in American Flat Track. We'll talk to him after this. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Harley Davidson, the official motorcycle of AFT Twins, and by American Flat Track, America's original extreme sport. Jared Mees has won here in Atlanta and he leads the season-long Sunoco go the distance standings, now covering 52 miles between our first two rounds of 2017. And here's our Mo Tool move of the race. Pretty obvious what it's gonna be here. Yeah, this story is gonna get told two totally separate ways. You got uh, Jared Meese's side, you got Sammy Halbert's side. One's the Republican, one's the Democrat, and uh, they're both gonna have totally different opinions on whose fault this was. They come together, Halbert goes down, Jared Meese goes on to take the win. It's gonna be back-to-back -back wins for Jared Meese here at Atlanta, and you also were able to lock down that coveted flat track Grand Slam. Talk about what's going through your mind right now. Yeah, you know, I got the got the Grand Slam, but, you know, I can't say enough for the whole Indian motorcycle team. Uh, man, one, two, three, this early out, I mean, it just shows how serious Indian is. To go back to back, um, you know, for win the first two is just huge confidence booster. I got a great routine going right now, and um, I just got a lot of people that are behind me 100% and make these wins happen, so thank you very much. Now, just to go back a little bit, I can't let you get away without asking. You had a heck of a battle going there with Sammy Halberg. Can you tell us from your viewpoint how that battle ended? Yeah, I definitely can. I, I mean, I was tracking him down and found something, and I boom, I caught him, and um, then we started dicing. You started start dive bombing each other and kind of slide jobbing one another. And uh, I dive bombed them down there pretty good and tried to drift them wide. And then he came back underneath me down here in uh, turns three and four and drove it up underneath me pretty deep. And then I was coming down the racetrack and he was already so far up the racetrack. We were trying to tr meet in the center. And as we came together, as we you know basically met, we basically came together and I had the inside advantage and he. I was going by and he caught his uh, handlebar caught my right leg and he went down. I mean, by no means was it intentional. It was just hard racing, you know, and I mean, I would like to say it's short track racing, but obviously this track's really big and nobody needs to ride like that. But it was push come to shove, man. And, uh, you know, last five laps for the Grand National win and we started dicing it and our lines just met. We went down. So uh, I'm sorry. I mean, like I said, it was definitely not intentional, but he wanted to win and so did I. It's the name of the game here in racing. Here are your results from the AFT Twins main event. It is the Indian sweep of the top three. Brandon Robertson on the factory Harley just ahead of his teammate Jake Johnson. Let's go to Heather for second place. Ending up in the second place position was Brad Baker. Brad, we talked in the beginning there how you were going to have to get to the front, but you and your teammate Brian Smith were battling the whole race practically. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was, a, it was a great race. We we ended up with a decent start, kind of got hung up on the outside, but uh, there were a lot of guys shuffling around there in that first straightaway, but um, the Indian motorcycle was turning really well. We, me and my team, we made a lot of changes today, and it, it's really gratifying to start quite a ways off and end up second on the box here. Uh, but it, it's cool to be involved in this this team, uh, Indian motorcycle, uh, supported by Allstate Motorcycle Insurance. They're, they're doing a great job. The whole team has really, really worked their, their tails off to get us some good bikes, and uh, it's pretty gratifying to be up here second on the box after uh, last weekend. I was just coming back from the hospital when the main event was ending. So I uh, had a really bad concussion, but uh, 
I was obviously my, my wits are about me and I, I went through all the testing and whatnot to be able to be cleared to ride today and uh, it just feels really good to be up here but Indian motorcycle one two three that's pretty cool I don't, I don't think that's been done in a long time or ever in history so I'm uh, really proud to be a part of it and Baker now up to six in the points despite scoring zero at the first race but look at the factory Harleys they're struggling Robinson and Coolbeth. yeah it looks like that uh List is upside down for the Harley guys right now. They're at the wrong side of it. And a new motorcycle, and they'll try to dial it in for our next race, which will be the Charlotte, North Carolina Half Mile. Great race here at the short track in Atlanta for Heather DeBow and Larry Pegram. I'm Jason Wygant saying thanks for watching, and congratulations to our winners, Dalton Gautier and Jared Meese.